Could you please share some truly professional tips and all life hacks on like uh, love in general? I don't want to limit you here anyway, in any way. So just some kind of like a piece of advice, a life hack, whatever. Um, well, one is appreciate the person for who they are rather than who you want them to be. Uh, often we go into a relationship thinking if I could just change a few things, this person could be really great. And it usually doesn't work if they'd only stop drinking, if they'd only stop smoking, if they'd only stop cheating on me. Uh, you know, forget about that. You're getting what you're getting. Uh, ex accept and value the person for who they are. And if you can't, it's probably the wrong person. That's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, don't, don't think you're going to change them into who you want them to be. Uh, number two is I think you have to give people a lot of space. Uh, right now, at this moment, uh, as we speak, mm -hmm. uh, my wife is in Austin, Texas, um, at a convention, and I have three 12 year old kids on my hands and, you know, making the dinners and keeping up the house. Um, we give each other space. This is something she wants to do. She goes, if I want to do something, I go. Uh, too often we start to cramp other people's style, you mm -hmm. know. Like, I see. Uh, impose what we want on them. And I think that that people begin to feel like uh, trapped if you don't give them the freedom to explore themselves. I think a third thing, I'll give you a three, a third I thing. I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, a third thing is that what you get when you enter a relationship isn't the way it's going to stay. In the triangular theory, I uh, I talk about the time course of each of the three components. Mm -hmm. Intimacy, passion, and commitment all have different time courses. In other words, they change differently over time. And what that means is that a relationship will never stay the same. Mm -hmm. It just won't because they rise and fall at different rates. So the third is don't think that what you're getting into when you enter the relationship is what you're going to have after six months or 12 months or 12 years, uh, that you have to get into it being willing to accept and value that they're going to change, you're going to change, and the challenge will be as much as possible to change in ways that work for each other or it won't work. I see Thank you so much. It's it's very inspirational and very deep from my perspective. So I hope people who will have a look at our interview will at least choose at least one. You know, <laughs> it's gonna be great. Yeah, keep yeah, keep things moving. Stay positive. Think uh, positive thoughts about the partner. Do things to make them happy. It doesn't always have to be you know, expensive and, oh, you know, I buy them an expensive piece of jewelry. It's about putting thought into it and putting some energy into it. It can be something creative, something sweet, something endearing, paying attention to what they like. It's about a dozen different things, but probably the single, there, there's one set of things that have to do with keeping it from, you know, keeping it okay. And then there's another set that have to do with really keeping it lively. As far as keeping it okay, at least okay, the biggest thing is yourself. People don't always want to hear that, but if you're anxious or depressed or something like that, getting therapy or learning to meditate or doing something, getting medication if it's severe, really can affect the relationship. It's not just you. It's how your partner is going to see you and how it's going to work out. People who are, you know, depressed or insecure, often they, you know, they're so excited when they enter a relationship and then they think it goes badly because they are seeing themselves as depressed and they're blaming it on the relationship. So it's really important. Yeah. Another big one is, is listening, uh, being responsive to the partner. It's really kind of crucial. Uh, another one is, uh, you know, <laughs> a fat is stress. I mean, you can't control that very well, but you have to be aware that uh, stress, uh, stress can be a problem, but also, we can misinterpret stress as, um, you know, when we're under stress, we can behave badly. 
and our mind is limited and we can, if the person does something slightly bad, we can only remember times they've done other bad things, being aware of the effect of stress. So some of those, are, and of course, <laughs> in some contexts, um, the community and the family, and you don't always have a lot of control over that, but um, you know, it, it can be a huge factor if your family disapproves or if your friends disapprove, you know, um, it's hard to deal with them. Anyway, those are some things that are sort of, you know, essential. And then there's things you can do to make it better. And one major focus of a lot of research is doing novel, challenging, exciting things with your partner. You know, go on a date night, you know, once a week, <laughs> or so, but do something different, not just same old, same old. Um, yeah. You know, it really makes a difference. We've got a lot of research showing that. Another one that I sort of mentioned already is have close couple friendships. Have friends that are you're close to other couples that you're really connected to. It's really good for the relationship. Um, what are some others? Uh, those are a couple. Of, oh, another one is celebrating your partner's successes. Turns out that that matters more than supporting them when things go badly, which is also important. But, oh. you know, when they have something good happen, you know, you don't you don't want to be over the top, you know, but you, you let them know you really are excited about it. You're really pleased that this happened. Don't just say, oh, that's nice. You know, <laughs> to the extent you can, honestly, Celebrate a partner's success. That really has a big effect. Um, expressing gratitude matters. Um, so those are some of the things you can do to keep it. Real. And of course, your sex life. You know, but as I told you before, don't be afraid of relationships. Because if you uh, work, it can become the most rewarding experience or even more than one experience in your life. Just consider that we always... We grown up with the idea this love is forever. Perhaps this was true for our grandparents when life was shorter. And then all this mechanism creating love on the other times, uh, they have to cope with other attitude of the brain that is curiosity. So betrayers, separation and divorce can be very common. So let's say, Brain mechanisms are created to make up happy. If your partner you don't love any longer, love finished, it's better to stop. I mean, sometimes, you know, we grow up with real love forever, maybe. And let's say brain mechanisms are created for this, but it's something that happens. You have to remember that there is not one only love in your life, that you can learn from your mistake and find a better part. And especially, you know, women, as women, we are, you know, sometimes too dedicated to the other. And so a suggestion that I gave to everybody is that to maintain, I say, the secret garden where you do something for you. You know, even a research that we did, the women have more oxytocin than men, and this probably makes them more generous, more devoted, more um, uh, available to sacrifice our career, our life for the part. So just maintain this secret where nobody can maintain some of this and meeting with the friends. So in, in the beginning, first beginning of our relation, the romantic love, we only want to stay with the part, but not forget the friends, families, obvious because they help to maintain healthy the relationship by the year. And then, even when you are not so young, you have to take care of, the, of your partner. You have to just remember that he or she can betray you, that there are people they can uh, attract in over. And so, you know, we work, we have the children, we have the problem, but don't forget that you have must have some time for your party to enjoy together. So you have your private hobby, your private time, but don't forget that there is somebody close to you and to you know maintain a sort of sham or fascination and doing things together to enjoy, stop routine, go out, you know, instead of staying always at home, you know, we had the COVID. <laughs> And we saw a lot of divorce, you know, people could tolerate to stay together the whole time. But in this case, avoid to be bored by the partner, by the life in the partner. So put some fire in the relationship. Because passion, you know, is not forever, but from time to time, if you turn 
or turn the fire on, it it is it can be maintained for a long time. 